for a strong finish to 2018, which gives us an even better start going into 2019, that we are going to walk in divine health in 2019, that we're going to walk in prosperity in 2019, that our children are going to walk according to the scripture in 2019. Hallelujah. Our seed is blessed in 2019. Every kind of seed. If it was the seed we sow and our children are our seed and they're blessed in 2019. Our jobs are blessed. Our companies are blessed. Everything we put our hand to is going to be blessed. And the best way to do that is to have a strong finish to this year. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve the God of, like Lindsay said, the God of breakthrough. And it's time to have a breakthrough before we go into this next year. Let's just, let's just pray real quick. And I, 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 everybody knows me. I like, to, I like for, I, I'm in uh, participation preacher, right? <laughs> Father, I thank you right now in the name of your son Jesus for your glory and your power to be released in this place tonight. I thank you, Lord, that not one of us will leave here uh, without full health and wholeness and healing in every area of our life, every facet that we will leave whole in every area in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for your glory to be poured out in this place. I thank you, Lord, that you put me on like a coat and wear me and let the words of my mouth be your words and not mine. Let your glory be released in this place like a river, like a mighty rushing wind that you would blow through this house tonight and change our lives and our hearts, that your anointing would be released and destroy every yoke of bondage and burden that might be held holding us captive. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus, you do. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise. I thank you, Lord, for a special anointing in this place tonight. A special anointing as we end this year and start another. We give you the glory and the praise. You alone are worthy. You alone are mighty and holy. Wonderful is your name, Jesus. Wonderful, mighty, and powerful is your name, O oh Lord. And we give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Did you feel the atmosphere change? Did anybody else feel that? Oh, I release the glory of the Lord right now that even as I begin to preach the word that Lord you sent your word and healed them that's what it says it says you sent your word and healed them so even as I begin to release the word of God that healing is going to pop in this place if you are in need of a healing or a miracle tonight is your night you came to the right place God is showing up here in power even as I speak your miracle and your healing is going to come on you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabababaha. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus is so good. He always shows up. He always shows up. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, I thank you. You always show up. Oh, hallelujah. Finish strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. Finish strong. God does not want you in defeat. He doesn't want you in defeat. He doesn't just want you in victory. He wants you in absolute victory. In every area. In every area. Absolute victory. Not partial victory. Absolute victory. Hallelujah. Woo! Somebody get excited. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's been given to you already. You might not see it. It might not be totally manifested, but the victory has been given to you already in every area of your life. Hallelujah. That's so awesome. We are, we've been given the victory. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Overcomes the world's system and the world's way of doing things, and the nasty things in the world, sickness, disease, uh, torment, poverty, and lack. 
It says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. Hallelujah. Our faith, that's the victory. Our faith in what? Jesus and the work that he did on the cross. Oh, 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 Ramandare, Arandaraha. This is gonna, this is gonna preach all over the place, and I, I'm not quite sure, I'm not quite sure where it's gonna land, but I'm excited about it. You see, many people, uh, they know that Jesus died for their sins, or they've heard of it at some point, but it's more than that. It goes beyond that. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for your sins. He died for your healing as well. By, it says by his stripes, the stripes that he bore on the back on the cross when they beat him with the cat of nine tails, by his stripes you are healed. It's already done. It's already done. It happened already. You are healed. It's happening right now in this room as the spirit of God moves around. Jesus moves around, walking around, and he's, 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 he's touching you right now. Healing power is being released because it's already done. He paid for it. It's so awesome. And we get it by faith. We get our victory by faith. Let's look at this. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. I think we have this one on the screen maybe. Yeah. All right. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I I shall be made well. Immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done this thing. And he actually, another version in one of the other gospels said that he said to them, They said, You you say everybody touched, everybody's touching you. And you say, Somebody touched you. He goes, No. And one translation, and one translation actually says, he said, no. He goes, I felt the power that constantly surges around me flow through me. Whew. How awesome is that statement? The power that constantly surges around him flew through him. And something had to put a jaw on it to cause that to happen. And that's why he said, who touched me? Who, glory to God. And looking around to see who had done this thing, he, the woman fearing and trembling and knowing what had happened to her came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Listen closely. The same words Jesus spoke to her is true for every one of us. Your faith will make you whole. Your faith will make you whole. We overcome the world by our faith. Jesus is showing us how this works. Everybody thinks healing and miracles is some mystical, magical thing. It's not. Jesus paid for it. It's already done. So when we pray for each other or we grab someone else that that needs outside of this building that needs the healing power of God, you can know it's already done. There's nothing special you've got to do. There's nothing you've got to do. You put you do what the word says. You put your hands on them and you say in the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't waste time with all that religious gobbledygook where you go, "Oh, Dear Lord in heaven above, we thank you for brother and sister so and so, and what a blessing they are, and da 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 da. And if you would see fit in your just please, no, don't do that. You go straight to the name, go straight to the power. You get hold of him, 
and you look at that sickness in the spirit. I don't get, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. You can look at them and you go, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Right? There's power in that. As I said that, somebody just got their healing. I don't know. I don't know. I just felt it. You can't say stuff like that and the power not be released. I'm telling you, that's how Jesus works. You can't say stuff like that and the power not be released. Glory. Get hold of it. This isn't just for select few. I am a plumber by trade. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're talking about a woman who had spent all she had and was no better. She spent every bit of money she had. It said, in fact, it said that she had suffered many things from many physicians. How many of you know some people who, and maybe it's you, who have suffered some things from some physicians? And let me tell you, thank God for doctors. They're working towards the same goal that we're working towards and God's working towards. Thank God for doctors. But how many of you know they are practicing medicine, right? We serve the great physician. He's not practicing anything. He created your legs to walk. He created your muscles to function properly. He created your eyes to see 2020. He created your ears to hear. He is the creator. He knows how it works. He knows the stuff that that we don't know. They're still trying to figure it out. He is more than able. He is more than able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. What did this woman do? Let's, you have to look at people who were successful, right? Whether it's in business or whether it's in the spirit, you look at success stories and you find out what they did. And this, is, this woman got her healing. But I don't know what you need today or what you're here today and, and you need something, but watch this principle because this is going to work for whatever miracle you need, for whatever you need in your life, you can access it this way. This woman saw herself healed. She saw herself healed before it even happened. And she said, look at it, it says right here, she said, if I may only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Before she even did it, before she even did it, she saw it in her mind's eye. She saw it, and then she said it with her mouth. The spirit of faith, you've heard me say it, and pastor say it, and everybody say it over and over again. The spirit of faith is I believe, therefore I speak, right? I believe, therefore I speak. She saw it, she believed it, she heard about Jesus, and she said with her mouth, she got, I guarantee you, I, just, I could just see her. She just got tired. She's, she's penniless. She spent everything. She doesn't have anything left. She's got nothing to lose. And she said, if I just touch his clothes, I will be made well. And she pushed through the crowd. She pushed through the crowd until she got to it. And she reached out and got hold of the edge of his garment. Just the edge. And immediately, she was made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 12 years. And immediately she was made whole. Some of you are at that spot where you're done. You're at the end of your rope. You don't know what's next. You don't know how to do it. I'm telling you tonight, get hold of this. Get hold of this. Get hold of Jesus. He will solve your problem. He will meet you at your place of need. If you activate it by faith, like Lindsay was saying just a little bit ago, she touched on this during during, uh, uh, tithe and offering, that There's lots of need in the world, right? God is not moved by need. Somebody said, what? He is not moved by your need. If God was moved by your need, the problem would be solved. There would be no problems in the world if God was moved by need. He is not moved by your need. He is moved by faith. That is how we access the victory, right? He is moved by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This woman saw herself healed before it even happened. She saw the work in her heart before she acted it out. And she spoke it. And then she acted on it. She had to do something. 
That's how faith works. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to speak something. You're going to have to believe something. You're going to have to see it in your heart. And you're going to have to act on something. I guarantee you, every time. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 18. I want to touch on this thing of seeing it. Luke chapter 18, verse 16. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. What does that mean exactly? I mean, I think we all have a general idea of what it means, but what is the kingdom of God? Many people get confused and they think it's a place. That's heaven. Well, heaven is, is a place. It is real, right? But he's talking about the kingdom of God, and it is in those of us who have Jesus in us. It is the kingdom way of doing things. In the kingdom of God, we're call, we, 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 Jesus prayed, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven, right? That is what we are after. We're after the kingdom here on earth now. The kingdom way of doing things now. That's what we want. Is there, is there sickness or defeat in heaven? No. That's what we're after. Your kingdom come, your will be done now on the earth as it is in heaven. Not later, now. Jesus wasn't talking about 3,000 years from now, Lord, your will be done in heaven, come to earth and all that. No, now. He died to bring the kingdom of heaven now. The kingdom of heaven, he said, is in you and it's in me. Hallelujah. So what is it? He goes, the kingdom of heaven, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. They will by no means enter it. What does that mean? Reagan, my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, we had Christmas, obviously, the same as everybody else last week, and she got all sorts of toys, right? Got Barbies. And it's so fun to watch her play this week with her new toys and her Barbies. In fact, my mother-in-law, I came home yesterday and my mother-in-law said, she kicked me out of the, out of the room. And I said, why did she kick you out of the room? She goes, she didn't want to, me to hear her making the voices for the Barbies, right? <laughs> and, and it dawned on me in that instant, in that simple instant, hit me. This scripture immediately came to mind. Children have an imagination. They don't have a problem with it. They can see stuff that we don't see, right? They can see stuff that we don't see. They have no problem looking at something and imagining a vast city in the middle of your living room, right? God is trying to get it through to us that if you want to access the kingdom of God, You've got to be like a little child. You've got to reaccess that imagination. That's how it works. That's how faith works. You've got to see it before you will receive it. Hallelujah. You've got to see it before you receive it. Whew. I, don't, I don't know if we know how powerful a statement that is. It's hard. We get in, I, I don't, I, I'm convinced after hearing this word from the Lord yesterday and, and seeing that, I'm convinced that the devil is out to steal imagination and capture it from a young age. The Bible talks about taking vain imaginations captive, stuff that's against God, but he doesn't say don't use your imagination. In fact, he's the one that created us as small children with an imagination. He created us to imagine, to see the unseen before it happens, to see it. Oh, hallelujah. We need to see what God is seeing for our lives. 
not just not, not, for going into 2019, I'm excited about it, but any time we need to see beyond 2019 what God has for your life. See it in your mind. Many of you, I know I, I, I got to thinking about this yesterday. I thought, Lord, I had seen things when I was younger and, and as I got older, they got shelved. Pull them off the shelf. Pull them off the shelf. Activate your imagination because it's from the Holy One. And if you let Him into it, you will see things in the Spirit. That's how He works. He will see things in the Spirit. He operates through us. He speaks through us. When we lay hands on somebody, Jesus in us is laying hands on us, on them through us. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I'm walking around and making everybody nervous. I, I do better if I'm walking. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to be like little children. Thank you, dear. Like little children. Children take things at face value. If you say something to a child, okay, that's true. You know, that's just their attitude. Okay, you know. You tell them Jesus is a healer. Okay, cool. I mean, I work up with the kids, you know, and that's how they do. You know, you say Jesus is a healer, and they're like, okay, cool. What are we playing next? Adults. Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. Children naturally have God-given imagination. It's easy for them to believe something because they can see it in their mind's eye. If you tell them something, whoosh! In their mind's eye, this huge imagination of whatever you just told them is laid out before them. And they're like, cool, you know. God, that you would put that back in our hearts. Revive our imaginations. Revive the imagination that you have given to us. A supernatural God-given imagination that we would see the things that you want us to see. That, that, oh, <laughs> I just... Um, um, Y'all might be ahead of me on this, but I just heard the Lord say, that's what, I, that's what I meant when I said eyes to see and ears to hear. That you would have eyes to see. He said, I pray that you would have eyes to see and ears to hear. Oh God, let us hear what you want to hear. Let us see what you want us to see. Open our eyes again. Open our eyes again. See, this is faith. That's faith. That's how it works. We're looking at how it works. Hallelujah. This is the victory. This is how you live in absolute victory. Glory to God. Whew. God is able. He is able. He is able. I don't know what your situation or circumstance is, but I can promise you one thing. He is able. Able. Mark chapter 1, verse 40. Whew. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, he's saying, if you are willing, you can make me clean. See, this is where a lot of people are, even believers. They do not have a problem believing God is able. When I say he is able, they're like, a lot of believers are like, well, of course, he's able. Yeah, we serve the God of the universe. But the problem comes in in most people's hearts is, is he willing? Is he willing? That, that's where this leper was covered in leprosy, his skin peeling and falling off of his body. They had to live outside the city. They were not allowed to be around other people. Hopeless, hopelessness. Doctors could not help. Hopelessness. Left to die. Over skin rotting disease. He said, Jesus, if you are willing, if, 
And he was imploring him, kneeling down, running, pushing past everybody. He wasn't supposed to be there. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. That was against the law. You weren't allowed to touch a leprous person. He stretched out his hand and touched an unclean person. Violated all sorts of Jewish laws. Stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I am willing. Be cleansed. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately, the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. I'm telling you right now, God is no respecter of persons. There is no scripture of any private interpretation. It says it right there in 2 Peter 1.20. No scripture is a private interpretation. So if he said it for him, he is saying it to everyone. This answers the question of is God willing? Without a doubt, he says, I am willing. Get it in your heart. Settle it down in your heart. He is willing and he is able. He will do it. It's hard to believe God for a miracle. It's hard to believe God for healing if you have allowed religious gunk to come in and say, well, I believe God has allowed this sickness to come on me to teach me a lesson. Yeah, it's, it's, it's here to teach me a lesson, right? Let me tell you something. That is a lie from the devil. That is a religious bunch of garbage. Poop. I'm a plumber. I can say it. It's poop. <laughs> it's garbage. The God we serve says every good and every perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. That means he's not good one minute and sending sickness on you another minute. He doesn't work that way. It says if you ask your father for a good thing, he's not going to give you a snake. Hallelujah. He there is no variation or shadow of turning with him. He is good all the time. And all the time. Yeah. Woo. Hallelujah. There's no variation or shadow of turning. Well, Brother Luke. He sends the rain on the just and the unjust alike. Rain comes. Just come, sends it. He sends it. Whew. Let me tell you something. If you live in the desert, in the deserts of the Middle East, rain is always a good thing. Hello? It says he sends to sun, the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. He sends the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Rain is a signifying emblem of prosperity in the desert. It'll cause your desert to bloom in the middle of dryness. Your desert's gonna bloom in the middle of, of sickness and disease. God is sending the sun to shine on you. He's sending rain to come down on you. Healing power is always present. All you gotta do is get a fire in your belly that you're not gonna settle for anything less and you're gonna reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm the only one excited up in here. Woo! You see, folks, Jesus, Acts, verse, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all, not some, all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. 
God is in us. God is in us. Hallelujah. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. If you have Jesus in your heart, that same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you and it will quicken your mortal body. It'll quicken it. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, I thank you for your presence and your spirit being poured out right now in this place. Your healing power and your anointing. Your miracle power to break every, every plan of the enemy for the new year. That none, none of the negative stuff that the enemy has planned for the upcoming year is going to come to pass. We break it now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your power and your glory. Oh, hallelujah. See, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus that went about healing all that were oppressed to the devil is still doing it today. And even more so, he is widespread today. When he was on the earth, he was relegated to a bodily form. And when he died and rose again, that changed. And now he's living on the inside of every believer. So you are taking Jesus everywhere you go. What are you doing with him? What are we doing with him? Whew. The power of God dwells in you. See, healing, health, wholeness, all of this is for a purpose. And it's not just so that we can be happy and sit happy and fat. It's for a purpose. God has someone that you are supposed to reach. He has a plan and a purpose. And his plan for your life is good to prosper you. And it's for you to reach out and change someone else's life. It's a, it's a whole other level when you reach outside of yourself and start using the Jesus in you to pray for someone else that's sick. And you watch. The Bible talks about how when we get away from the church... There was prophets in the, and a prophet in the Old Testament who saw uh, as he moved away from the temple, the water got deeper. And it was the water of the Spirit. As we move out into the world, we bring the kingdom way of doing things with us. Hallelujah. We bring it with us. And the power of God actually gets greater when we get outside of the church with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God and he is just waiting for you to activate your faith to see it in your imagination and reach out and touch someone and let his power flow through you and let me tell you the first time it happens you, you suddenly realize it has nothing to do with you we try and figure things out in our head we try and figure out five ways to do this and seven ways to do that and all that but some things are just by the power and spirit of God. And it's simple. Believe it. See it. Speak it. And act on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 